In this video I will demonstrate the basics of placing items on our grid by line number. A grid always has lines. These lines are horizontal and vertical and are indexed from 1. In a right to left language such as English, column line 1 is on the left hand side of the grid and row line 1 is at the top of the grid. Lines are indexed from the other side using negative values, therefore column line minus 1 is the far right line in a left to right language and this would all be reversed if you were working in a right to left language. So here I've defined a four column and three row grid. There are four items on the grid and at the moment they are laying out one in each cell based on the auto placement rules. If I wanted to place item one from the first column line to the last column line I could do this. So we're using grid column start and I'm saying line 1 and then I'm going to say grid column end minus 1 and you can see now how this item stretches right across the grid. The auto placement rules mean the other items just shift down and carry on laying out in each cell. Now I can represent this CSS as a shorthand. So we can say grid column 1 forward slash minus 1. And that's exactly the same. So the start value is before the forward slash and the end value is afterwards. So we can use the same method to position the other items on our grid. So let's take the second item. Start at line 1 and grid row 2 item 3 we'll start at uh, grid column 2 and we'll end at 4 and that will push it along and item 4 start at line 3 and 5 and because there's not space for it you can see that it's jumped down already into grid row 3 so you can see that as well as positioning the items around the grid we can also leave white space. The items aren't going to float up in the way that would work with floats uh, where things try and go up to the top. You can actually leave white space on your grid because you've created a definite grid and then you're positioning your items on it. Note that where we only span one track we don't need to add our end line because the default is to span one track of the grid. Uh, you can also use a span keyword. So instead of actually saying line 4 here, we could just say span 2. And that would get the exact same effect as defining the exact end line. So that's quite useful for creating components on your grid that you know just want to span two tracks of the grid. So rather than actually specifying the end line, you could just say, I want it to start here and then span two tracks.